Gracie from Three Rivers Homestead, and we're going to show you what we've canned and froze and preserved this week. Of August, we try to preserve things every single day. See what we were able to preserve. So just a few days ago, we started getting our first ripe um, tomatoes here. And so I'd have just enough to maybe do a small batch of dehydrating. It's not enough to uh, do a batch of canning or anything. So I'm just going to get these tomatoes on the dehydrator sheets. And that's what I'm going to uh, work on today for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Okay, so I've got my tomatoes all sliced up. Um, the cherry tomatoes, you just cut them in half to put them on your dehydrator trays. And then I have this summer squash that was gifted to me by a friend that I'm not going to use up before it goes bad. So I just decided to add that so that the dehydrator would be a little more full. Now vegetables go in the dehydrator at about 125 degrees. Fruits you want at about 135. So I'm just going to meet in the middle and I'm going to dry these at 130. And um, we'll see how long it takes. It all depends on the humidity in the air today. But yeah, so this is today's project. Here is what I have after I process it. Now I could process this down more finely or when I put it in my jar here I could strain it through like a mesh uh, strainer and then take the bits that are a little larger and process them, them again until everything is finely um, powdered. But this is going to be good enough for what I'm going to use this for because this will mostly just be for adding it to like tomato sauce and things like that for a little extra nutrition. So I don't need it perfectly fine. This is what's gonna work. So I'm gonna get this in a jar. All right, so I got that squash and tomato powder all pulverized down now, and it was just enough to fit in a half pint jar, which is really good. Um, that's kind of what I was shooting for. What I like to do is save my dehydrated items in as small of a container as possible. Like ideally, it would be a single serving jar, although this is probably enough for me to use to thicken two sauces. But every time you open a container of dehydrated items, you potentially add moisture into that jar. And then when you go to seal it up, that moisture will is what makes your powders and things like if you have onion powder that gets clumpy, that's because moisture has gotten in there and caused that to happen. And it compromises the long term storage of that item. So if you're dehydrating foods, you want to limit the number of times you're going to be opening the container that they're stored in. So this will be great. This will give me two servings and um, will last a nice long time on my shelf. So, <laughs> all right. And today's project is turning these homegrown blackberries into some jam. And I think I'm going to have my girls help me do that here. They're all tasting if these are. Don't put them in your mouth. So today we're working on these cherries and I've got my little boys here using the pitter to get the pits out and then my sweet helper Elizabeth is removing the stems here. And I think we're going to make some cherry pie filling with this. How's that sound guys? Good? Okay. 
So we are going to use the Pomona's Pectin recipe for blueberry pie filling, but we're using cherries and we're experimenting to see how this turns out. Gracie is stirring up our sugar and pectin. I've got my jars ready here. And we've got our cherries cooking down. And then no waste here. The uh, pits will actually be boiled to make a juice and then we'll turn that into cherry jelly. So lots of fun stuff going on. It's Wednesday, day four of the challenge, and today I spent some time um, this morning in the garden before it gets really hot, um, just harvesting some herbs. So I'm going to dry these today as my contribution to the challenge. <laughs> Got all of my herbs inside, and let me show you what all I picked today, just a little bit of everything. Um, this is, I believe this is apple mint here, lemon verbena. Up here, I think this is another kind of mint. It's a mystery mint, I'm not sure. And spearmint, we've got lemon basil, um, lemon balm, parsley, uh, another mystery mint. Mm, and this is pineapple mint, I know that. We've got basil here, some rosemary, some oregano, sage, and thyme. And I'm just going to um, preserve most of these by hanging them up to dry. Uh, with the exception of the lemon verbena, is going to be infused in some vodka. My little girls want to make um, perfume, like Laura and Little House had lemon verbena perfume. So they're going to try that. And then otherwise, the basil will, will be for fresh eating. So will the parsley. But the rest of this is going to hang dry to add to our herb collection. All right, we got all of our herbs hung and drying. When you dry herbs, you want them to be somewhere kind of dark and warm, and this room gets less light than some other places, so this will work. We're just hanging them right here on our stairs, and it actually makes the house smell wonderful, so this is a great place to hang them. So I just stripped all the leaves off of the plants, put it in a jar here, and covered it with vodka, and I'll just shake it up every day. And for a couple of weeks, that will infuse the vodka, and we can use that alcohol to spritz and make a perfume. All right, it's Thursday, and we have a really busy day planned here. Um, we have just have a lot going on. Our friend is dropping off a bunch of um, hay that we're going to store for the winter and straw, and we got some firewood from him, and he's the friend that raises pigs for us, so he's delivering our pork. Hi, buddy. I've got a fussy baby on my back. I'm trying to make lunch for all the men after they get done doing their work. But today, I am preserving, I don't know if you can see back there, some um, chicken. So why don't I show you what I have going on. So since we're getting some uh, meat in the, into the freezer today, I needed to clear some out. And so I had just have some chicken. Um, a lot of these are just like extra feet that we had. There's some whole chickens, and there's just some um, leftover carcasses in there. And I just have them in my... Um, pressure canner. I'm going to pressure cook these for a couple hours today, let it cool, and then I'm going to can it later on. And this is going to be my canning project for today. My goal this year is to try to can as much meat as possible. Um, today we are also, while all of this is happening today, um, we're bringing Rosie, our heifer, our beef heifer, we're taking her in to be processed. So we have about two or three weeks before that meat will also fill the freezers. And so there's just a lot of space that needs made in the month of August. So my goal is to can as much as possible. Even some of the pork that's being delivered today, the roast will likely be canned. Um, I really enjoy having canned meat, and I've done a video on how I do that before. I'll link it in the description so you can check that out. It's just so convenient to have on hand. This chicken will be um, wonderful to use for soups and chicken and rice, um, chicken noodles, uh, whatever we want to use it for this winter. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, now we need to get busy unloading everything from uh, the trailer. <laughs> oh, I need, I need more stackers.
Good job. All right, it's been a couple hours and our broth is all cooked up here. I'm gonna pick the chicken off of the bones and then we're gonna can this up. So now I am picking the meat off of the bones and filling up my jars. And then after I fill it with meat, I just top it off with a little bit of the broth. All right, I've got seven quarts here of um, chicken and broth plus two extra quarts that will go in the fridge to be used up here this weekend. And I'm gonna get these in the pressure canner now. It's Friday and today for the Every Bit Counts Challenge, I have dehydrated some kale. I got this started this morning and now I'm just gonna put it in the food processor to blend it down into a powder. My kale is all in a powder now and I'm just gonna put it into this small jar here and hopefully it'll be enough to fill it up all the way. It fit into this half pint jar just about perfectly and that'll be enough for a couple servings for smoothies or something like that this winter. I'll just sprinkle it into that or I can add it to some soup and it'll add some wonderful nutrition. So I make sure to label the lid and we'll just set this up on the shelf with all of the other dehydrated goodies. Whenever I'm processing kale, you know, you have the stems left over when you destem them. And I like to save mine. I cut them into about two inch strips and I freeze them. And kale stems are a bit um, tough to chew when they're raw. But when you freeze them, thaw them, and then cook them later on, they're actually a pleasant texture. I like these for stir fry. So in winter, I'll just grab out a handful and toss them into the pan with my other vegetables. And it's a great way to make use of the scraps that would otherwise go to waste. There's some good nutrition and fiber and other vitamins in there that um, would otherwise just be wasted. So make sure that you use every bit of those vegetables that you spend all that time growing, all that hard work. You don't want it to go to waste. All right, and so today it's Saturday. And for the Every Bit Counts Challenge, today we've decided to go foraging. We're having a girls' day, aren't we, ladies? Mm -hmm. And we decided to stop at my parents' property because they have an abundance of elderberry trees that we're gonna pick from to make some elderberry syrup later on. And they also have a lot of wild blackberries. And while we grow some blackberries in our garden, um, we can always use more to preserve for the winter. So we're gonna see if, there's, if the wildlife around here has left any of these berries for us. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah, let me see. Beautiful. Yeah, let me see. All dark. Nice. All right, we're back just in time. It just started raining, but we're back with our some of our elderberries here that we picked, and I rinsed them off, and all I'm going to do is flash freeze these um, in the freezer on cookie sheets, and then when they come out of the freezer, the berries will fall right off the stems. If you don't do that, you're in for a lot of work picking the berries off. So I'll show you what that's like after they come out of the freezer. Uh, 
All right, so we ended up with three little half pint jars of the elderberries, and that's a perfect size. I'll use one of these as a cup of berries um, each time I go to make syrup. So when we go back to my parents later this week, we'll get more berries, and hopefully that'll give us a few more batches of syrup, but every little bit counts. So this is three batches. I'm very pleased with that. Next video will show what we preserved next week. Bye!